the Habs made a sneaky good trade today and we now have the truth behind why they traded for Jacob Perot and an inside look on exactly what the Habs see in him and I'm gonna tell you it's some pretty solid potential we have to dive into that plus the rumors keep on coming as Dave Pangata said things have only picked up and picked up on the David Savard front over the last couple of hours you're gonna want to stick around for this episode of Habs Digest Jesse we're gonna jump straight into this. David Savar talks are heating up. Now, we've talked a lot about David Savar, and, uh, well, here's the thing. He's going to be very much in demand, and that's no secret. There have been more and more defensemen traded over the past day or two, and that leaves David Savar as one of the most desirable guys on the market, so it came as no surprise when Dave Pagnotta said it appears to be increased interest, or there appears to be increased interest in Habs defenseman David Savard, who has one more year left on his contract with a $3.5 million cap hit. Some around the situation, believe there's a chance he will be moved by the deadline we'll see but talk seems to have picked up and now some around the situation that could very much include Habs insider Eric Engels it could include some other teams maybe some teams who are kind of getting desperate now Jesse with all the defensemen being moved you gotta think that maybe this is less Kent Hughes shopping David Savard but teams really starting to phone in and maybe creating a bidding war for one of the last strong right-handed D-men out there well that's just it you have to feel like one of the defensemen for the Montreal Canadiens will be dealt by this trade deadline. It's just one of those places where we really need to free up some space there. So, I mean, you really have to feel like it's almost a process of elimination right now. And as, you know, Edmonton's going, as the inevitable Hannafin trade is happening and everything else, that, of course, they're starting to call David Savar. We knew this was coming, but Kent, you know, definitely has his price on this. But I feel a big factor of this that sometimes maybe isn't talked about enough is just, you know, I feel like Kent Hughes doesn't want to retain salary if not as as little as possible and that might be kind of the big sticking point there right is because he still has a little bit of a sizable contract but if you're Kent Hughes it's why do you want to keep any money on the books if you don't have to and if there's a way to maybe free up a spot on the defense you know by not keeping any salary as well right so of course that's all going to be dictated by the market by what they're looking for when we know though those right-handed defensemen rugged like David Savard that that definitely that's gonna that you know he's definitely gonna be in high demand right now again I think just the salary big big sticking point here and no salary retention yeah 100% I mean look at what Toronto did they went out and got ex-hab Joel Edmondson for a third and a fifth now he can play a bit of right D if he needs to he's done that a good amount in the past they also went out and got Ilya Lavushkin, a very physical right D so you know teams are, who want to compete in the playoffs are in demand for exactly these kind of players as we've mentioned many times before um, but you're very right that retention spot's going to come down to it the Gensel rumors are going crazy if the Habs can retain on that deal they could very well get a third round pick or if they retain on Savard even though it's an extra year if they can get a burst out of it somehow if the market dictates that it might it might not depending on the bidding where that'd be amazing but yeah to hear things have picked up uh, look again don't think Kent Hughes is shopping David, David Savard is playing in the in the game well the game hasn't happened yet uh, as of the recording of this video but he's been he'll be playing so there's a lot of a lot of stuff that can very well happen with David Savard over the coming 24 hours uh, but we got to jump into the actual trade that was made and we're going to reveal some of the truth behind the Jacob Perot trade. Now, if you guys weren't aware, which I don't know which one of you is not aware, you guys watch this channel, but you guys are all Habs fans. We all know that the Habs acquired Jacob Perot from the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for forward Jan Mishak. Now, Mishak, down in Laval, he just, he hasn't got it going for them. He, he is a great prospect that just hasn't quite turned out exactly how we wanted. And Jacob Perot was kind of the same for the Anaheim Ducks. Now, with the San Diego Gulls, because he was drafted in the first round of the 2020 entry draft. But Jesse, he's never really got it going. Now, we'll get into his draft profile in a bit. Um, But the first thing here that really stood out to me is it's two guys who are fairly highly touted, maybe Perot more so than Mishak, that just need a change of scenery. And I think Kent Hughes, like, that is one of his big MOs. No, absolutely. And it's kind of one of those low-risk, high-reward. It's too bad that didn't work out with Jan Misak because definitely been following him for a couple of years. But, I mean, that's just the nature of the game, right? You want to cast a wide net when it comes to prospects. But, you know, you have to feel here with this trade, again, that – that high chance of that upside just because of Perot playing that very fast game, having a good shot. Now, you know, being quick and being able to get into those good spots and then have a good shot to really take advantage of it. It's a really good comparison, right? Or it's a really good uh, sort of combination mm -hmm. that can really go together well, right? So, um, you know, these AHL guys, they can surprise you sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes we it's easy to kind of discredit them until, until very recently we have a player like Jinya kind of come up and already kind of have an effect at 
at the NHL level, right? So this is a player here in Jacob Perot who he's proven that he can be a goal scorer at the OHL level. That's the reason why he was selected in the first round, 27th overall. So, you know, it's just about kind of putting that together. And you got to feel like there's still some runway to, to make that happen for him. Yeah, he's still very young, 21 years old, brother of Gabe Perot, top draft pick this year. I believe it was the Rangers who, who took him in the first round, 23rd. And of course, son of Yannick Perot, Habs legend, right? There's a, there's a lot of connections here. Uh, of course, Montreal, born and raised. Um, but here's the thing with Perot, like you said, Jesse, his shot is, uh, well, that's his biggest asset. And that's no secret. In a scouting report from September 2020 from Dauber Prospects, they said that Jacob Perot had one of he was one of the most intriguing forwards. He possessed the best shot in that draft, that 2020 draft, from anyone not named Alexander Holtz, who we've talked a good bit about on this channel. He has a crafty offensive game. Now, so far, he's his playmaking has not been amazing. So he kind of projects as more of a long-term winger. Even now he's playing more so wing. Um, and some defensive shortcomings, but his potential, as you can see, the last sentence here, his potential was very high. There's a world where he goes top 10 in a redraft and he he has legitimate 40 goal potential now the problem is he had a very bad 2022 23 worse than the year prior he went from 37 points in 55 to 19 and 48 and as you guys saw well he went even down to 18 and 31 so i guess the point production technically went up uh higher points per game but still that goal scoring is not where you want it to be Still not quite at that old pace, but the goals have been one of the worst teams in the ahl and he played through an injury for the full season Look, all the signs point to Jacob Perot eventually taking that leap and really putting things together as a good goal scorer. Some of his scouting reports have said he's always in the right place at the right time, Jesse. And again, I don't project him to be an impact player for Montreal. I think we're beyond that. And if it happens, amazing. But at the very least, I think this guy projects to be a top tier goal scorer for the Laval Rocket if he can get his game together. And I, I think that upside that we talked about that at one time, what was called a 40 goal NHL upside, we could maybe see it shine through because it really seems like the Montreal Canadiens have really placed an emphasis on development and putting guys in situations where they're able to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. At worst, you know, kind of being a contributor for the AHL. You know, we're not going to lie, probably a higher likelihood of that, more of kind of a depth move. But again, they can really surprise you. Is What's been so great about the Laval Rocket of late is they've shown that they can really develop our prospects. You know, take them, even if it's from the NHL coming down. They've done a great job. We're putting much more onus on that of late, right? So you have to feel like that'll help, right? If you're a player with those talents, sometimes you just need a little bit of coaching, just a change of scenery, right? Again, 21 years old, we've seen a lot of, NHL's players you know their their careers turn around you know as they're just learning to kind of find their game right so again there, there's the talent there this needs a little bit of coaching you know to kind of put that all together but all the same a little bit of reinforcements right now for the Laval Rocket yeah for sure and hey he'll, it'll hopefully pay dividends right away really excited to see what he can do down there with that nice young core they got but what do you guys think about the Jacob Perot trade do you see the potential that we and what many scouts saw in him a number of years ago because again in the right situation with the right coaching you really never know what these guys can turn into but that'll do it for this episode of Habs Digest if you enjoyed leave a like comment subscribe to the channel help us push to 12,000 subs we'd really appreciate it I'm Josh Goss my co-host Jesse Poirier we'll catch you in the next one